नमस्ते एवरीवन इन द फील्ड ऑफ लर्निंग एनीथिंग बिफोर कमिंग इन टू द फील्ड आई हैव आस्ट माय सेल्फ व्हाट इज द पर्पस ऑफ सच लर्निंग द पर्पस ऑफ एनी लर्निंग इज द बेटरमेंट ऑफ ह्यूमन लाइफ or betterment of any type of life the betterment of life what i believe is the prime purpose of learning not talking of the subject that i deal with that i love that i teach astrology what is the purpose of learning astrology the purpose is to understand many things understand why we are born understand how things work the great symmetry between things right this understanding is the core point after this core point the second thing that is important is prediction we predict <clears throat> what is going to happen in future but the point is why we should predict or why why prediction is there is it there to make people believe on fate is it there to make people stop trying of course not the purpose of prediction is that we know beforehand what is going to happen and try to change it avoid it or prepare ourselves accordingly to face it now leaving this prediction part aside as i have started with the purpose of betterment how do we better our lives with astrology we understand how time works and we use muhurta to use the beneficence of time and the qualities inherent in time to avoid the pitfalls and weaknesses and the misfortune regarding anything however regarding prediction we can use it to you know we can use it to prepare ourselves to face things and all that stuff but the real transformation of astrology comes through rashi is what i have believed if you ask me the most important thing that i will recommend a jyotish learner to get accustomed to very seriously if there is something that i will want every good astrologer to know about my only recommendation ever will be my favorite subject that is rashis why because it is the rashi that is the hand of free will see basically rashi means quantity rashi means heap in sanskrit we say dhan rashi is quantity of money right and rashi for anything that is the quantity and rashis indicate karma the types of karmas that we have done in the previous life but types of karma more comes through houses the level of karma someone have donated something but how big the donation is or how small the donation is it comes through rashi now as rashi indicates the quantity it also tells us the ways why the study of rashi is so important because rashi tells us what to do and if you follow see rashi is also you know inherent astrological remedy kind of a stuff rashi is like muhurta is astrology is a part of astrology and muhurta is an authenticated authorized astrological remedy if you do any remedy mantra japa danam donation and anything as such they are spiritual remedies right they are not astrological spiritual remedies also work but that's another thing talking of astrological remedy muhurta 
मैच मेकिंग दीज थिंग्स आर एस्ट्रोलॉजिकल रेमिडीज प्रिवेंटिव मीजर्स और मीजर्स फॉर द बेटरमेंट ऑफ ह्यूमन लाइफ एंड सो इज अ राशि identification of the rashis which are good identification of the rashis which are bad and the identification of what should be done for a rashi is the prime thing in astrology once you get it there is nothing left to be done to understand the nature to understand the action to understand the reaction make changes accordingly prepare yourself for things that are going to come is what rashi primarily deals with so anyone who is wishing to change their lives for better make appropriate changes to become more fortunate in life should learn about rashis without any doubt there is no two point into it there is no two fact into it right to learn about rashis rashi is a very very in depth study to be very honest with you rashi is a very in depth study and the power that rashi can give you in prediction through the different elements which are not much understood now a days but the power that different rashi related factors give you in prediction is something that you cannot ignore and my high recommendation to anyone who wishes a good level of progress in astrology will be to not ignore the rashi and to overcome the dearth of teachings on rashi i am going to do a course mastering the rashi this course is starting from 4th of september 2022 will be of 15 classes and will go up to 11th of december 2022 the classes will be every sunday 8 pm onwards it will be around 2 and a half hour class every day i will be sitting with students teaching them and if they have any queries i will be answering the queries in the class itself with the course there is a private group of the course the students will be added in that group also and if they come across any question throughout the week because classes are weekly they can ask it in the group each and every class will be recorded also recordings will be provided to the students as well and those recordings will be accessible for a lifetime and also if needed to help the students to remember the key terms i will also be supplementing them with pdfs as well right so if you are if you wish to make good progress in astrology if you want to become a good astrologer rashis are very important that you should learn and there is nothing better than learning anything traditionally in the traditional way with me in my courses to illustrate you the importance of rashis today i am going to teach you a very subtle but a very important topic understand it this way that all the rashis from leo to capricorn are ruled by sun so leo virgo libra scorpio sagittarius and capricorn is ruled by sun and the remaining rashis from cancer in the reverse order cancer gemini taurus aries pisces and aquarius is ruled by moon this is the reason for the lordship of planet on the different rashis it is a basic pattern it is a basic story that is told in astrology the story is leo the rashi is ruled by sun cancer the rashi is ruled by moon and every rashi 
from cancer backwards gemini taurus aries pisces and aquarius is also ruled by moon collectively ruled by moon and rashi is after leo that is virgo libra scorpio sagittarius and capricorn these rashis are ruled by sun now regarding planets as you should know mercury is the fastest planet followed by venus followed by mars followed by jupiter followed by saturn so saturn is the slowest and mercury is the fastest the story goes that sun and moon are the father and mother of the zodiac of everything respectively so what happens mercury comes first to sun and moon and demands a rashi from them sun gives him the next rashi virgo and moon gives him the next rashi gemini after mercury venus comes to sun and moon as the mother and father and demands a rashi from them right as these planets are taken as children of sun and moon so what does sun do sun gives him the next rashi libra and moon gives him the next rashi taurus remember moon is going in anti clockwise fashion sun is going in clockwise fashion throughout the zodiac after that as per the speed mars comes to sun and moon demands a rashi from them sun gives mars scorpio and moon gives mars aries after that as per the speed jupiter comes to sun and moon demands a rashi from them sun gives sagittarius to jupiter and moon gives pisces to jupiter. in the end slowest in speed saturn comes to sun and moon demands a rashi from them sun gives capricorn to saturn and moon gives aquarius to saturn this is a basic story which tells us how the lordship of rashis are given to planets the basic point is all the 12 rashis are primarily half of it is ruled by sun and half of it is ruled by moon they give the rashis to different planets now there is one thing that you have to understand and from this understanding comes many remedies and many secrets of predictions if you can get it understanding is the most important thing right see you have to understand the point to become a scholar understanding is the most important thing if you just remember things and just remember to you know just just remembering will help you pass an examination but will not make you an scholar that is for certain understand a point sun is the father sun is the male sun gives the power of action moon is female moon is mother that indicates caring love mind mentality and moon is also fortune sun is determination will control motivation and all these things right so there is first basic thing the in a horoscope you have to take the planets and decide whether maximum planets are situated in rashis from leo to capricorn that will be in the sun half or maximum planets are situated in aquarius to cancer that will be the moon half now nine planets are there nine is an odd number so of course equal number of planets cannot be there at least one more in one section will be there so if in a horoscope maximum planets are situated in sun half from leo to capricorn 
such people are brilliant is what is told now how do you what do you understand by brilliant it basically means that people having maximum number of planets from leo to capricorn achieve things in life through their self will achieve things in life through their hard work achieve things in life by themselves generally either such people are not blessed to have a family business not blessed to have much finances in life and even if they are blessed to these blessings generally don't help them in their greatness they are the makers of their own fortune if they depend on things that they get from others from their parents and from the society things that they get from free it is not going to work for for the maximum planet in the sun department your thinking your intellect your planning is going to help you and other than that other things are not going to help you everything is dependent on you the approach you have the type of mentality you have the decisions you make and everything as such the support from someone else is not going to come also because sun indicates the gods these are those people for whom the remedies related to worship the remedies related to mantra chanting the remedies related to donation etc the religious remedies work maximum religious remedies works for them and once we identify that to such people only religious remedy should be recommended as it is what is going to help them maximum for the second set of people who have maximum number of planets situated from aquarius to cancer moon becomes the ruler such people are soft spoken such people are beautiful and attractive they talk very sweetly everyone is quickly impressed by them to get name fame status recognition it is very easy for them these are those people who will start something and quickly become famous quickly become loved by people and society they have long contacts good contacts basically maximum planets in the moon department indicates that many a things come through fortune the moon half basically makes you fortunate the moon half basically indicates someone who is fortunate right so in such cases inheritance they will get such people generally don't have to do many things on their own there are people to support them they get money properties resources from their family right they have good contacts so other people can work for them right so the blessing part the blessing part comes to them for this particular reason they don't have to do much hard work the only thing that they have to do is to maintain the resources and use the resources properly not wasting them right this is the basic thing that they have to do they become quickly famous they succeed quickly they are supported by people they are loved by people they are generous soft spoken soft hearted things of everyone and they are those people who actually want to do good to the society sun half people believe that it is self betterment that they are more you know, that they are more responsible of like the hinayan of buddhism whereas the moon half people wants to make society a better place who want to work for the society who you know want to do better for everyone want to make the world a better place it's like mahayana of buddhism right this is the basic difference between two 
by using this technique one have to understand the type of nature for someone right and it it helps you a lot in prediction right you will have to use a little bit of your mind i can also tell it to my students to you also but spoon feeding can help you very little right there is a person having maximum number of planet in sun half he is somehow planning that my father mother are practicing doctors and i have also learned medicine suppose he is a single child and he is expecting that i will take the practice and with my father and mother i will start practicing or say it is a parent whose child have a lot of planets in sun half and they are expecting the, the, the child to take on their work later on will it happen of course not resources things that you get from people these things are not going to help those people who have sun in the maximum half so to such people to such parents or to such child you say that no you have been a, you became a doctor now that is very good but your horoscope tells me that if you do your own practice separately you will be more successful as compared to just sitting and expecting to inherit the position of your father or inherit the position of your parents in such a way there can be multiple uses of it that you can think of at least in 17 18 types of questions i generally use it and tell people what to do for an example if you want to start a ngo with a person having maximum number of planet in sun half forget about the ngo he will be more developed in how much money he can earn how good business he can make they are not inclined towards doing good for the society rather they are inclined towards doing good for themselves also if you have maximum planet in sun half and you are thinking that you know i have done so much work but there is no one to you know recognize me or there is no one who is thankful to me you have to understand that having maximum planet in the sun half generally likability by people people standing by your side people supporting you people understanding you will be something difficult to come right this comes very easily very normally for moon half people right for you it will be difficult to come hence don't expect such things right in this way multiple uses can be made there right for an example take this horoscope which is made for the current moment what do we find from aquarius to capricorn there is moon jupiter rahu mars sun and venus 2 3 4 5 6 planets in whereas in sun half from leo to capricorn there are only three planets mercury ketu and saturn so basically in this horoscope maximum planets are in the moon half hence this person will be famous he will have a lot of blessings and many things that he will do in life will happen through his friends through his influences through his family members and this person is prime point maximum planets in the moon half you are lucky and luck will help you achieve everything so maximum importance for such people should be given to the ninth house and the analysis of ninth house hidden secret that i am telling you right now which house becomes more important for what type of horoscope right this is the biggest problem that people do apply every type of the shine every horoscope there is eligibility criteria right if you want to apply for a job there will be an eligibility criteria for 80% of the rules in astrology there is an eligibility criteria the problem is people don't understand the eligibility criteria and apply any rule in any horoscope which leads them to an erroneous calculation erroneous conclusion for people having maximum planets in the sun half 
they are brilliant and with their planning with their karmas and with the right step right decision at the right point of time they are going to achieve success for such people the analysis of 10th house the strength of 10th house the beneficence of the 10th house is something that decides their success or failure for maximum planet in the moon half this is the ninth house auspiciousness of the ninth house the strength of the ninth house that indicates success or failure this is a great hidden traditional secret that i have told you just right now one of the few hints regarding how much in depth we will go in the course mastering the rashi that is starting from the next month of september 4th of september if i am not right i have just told it in the video or somehow forgot so that's the first basic point but secondarily moon half is ruled by pitrus ancestors of course they are blessed by you know they are blessed in the matters of uh, french they are blessed in the matters of contacts and money and they are fortunate but generally for such people having maximum planets in moon half what i have noticed it they have some problem related to progeny either they have a progeny that is difficult to deal with they have a progeny they do which do, does not listen to them or they are more emotional over protective about their progeny which in turn leads their progeny to you know be difficult or become adamant or somehow they have problem in conception or giving birth to progeny you know the birth of progeny is delayed or problems related to children is what is very noticeable in the moon half also in the same matter in, in the same manner to take the technique a bit further to push it a bit further now we have to understand a point that the rashis for the planets one rashi is into the moon half and one rashi is into the sun half so mars is protection okay or oh, one more thing you remember sun is social life moon is personal life sun is profession moon is home mars is protection protection of your family comes through aries because that is a martian rashi ruled basically owned by moon protection of your coworkers protecting the things that you are working for comes through scorpio you know what many people there are many people who are concerned about their field getting degraded for example you know there are many like the, the, the two type of people poets two type of poets you know i remember uh, i remember someone wrote this i read it long ago in a newspaper i don't i don't remember now which newspaper it was but there was a writer he wrote a very beautiful thing he wrote that in earlier times the writing of people in the form of stories and poems was to educate the society to create a change in the society however today rather than influencing the society literature is now being influenced by the society rather than teaching society what to do literature is more on pleasing the x gen x gen y whatever literature is more on pleasing them rather than teaching them now this writer who now this author who have written the article who seems to be a writer he is much concerned about his you know his profession that you know the practice of our profession is getting degraded and all these things this is happening because of a strong scorpio why protection maintenance of ethics and standards application of rules and regulations is ruled by mars this is what mars is a commander in chief this is what he does for the king to help the king maintain law and order to make people remain under control be under control is the purpose of mars the application part how to make a better society 
how to have a better rulership is what the ministers will advise the king. But it is the commander in chief who will implement. So those who are much concerned about their professional life, those who are concerned about their professional practice falling or degrading, are the people who have a prominent and a very positive Scorpio. Right? Like positive Scorpio are the ones who are wishing to save their fields. Those who have high standards and high ethics and high morals regarding the profession they are into. Whereas people will people with afflicted Scorpio can be the ones who are the harbinger of the destruction kind of a stuff. For an example, you know, in music also, there was a time in between when the you know uses of vulgar words and all such things came into music, for which many people were worried about. The one who is instigating this vulgar kind of things, one who is creating this vulgar kind of things in music, degrading the standards are the ones with afflicted Scorpio. Those who are uplifting the standards are the one with powerful Scorpio. And how we are making this differentiation? We are making this differentiation that Mars is the protector. And Scorpio is that Rashi of Mars that belongs to the professional aspect of life. Whereas a powerful Aries, a good Aries is someone who wants to, because Aries is personal life, Mars is discipline. Or application of those things, on ground application of those things that the kings want for the betterment of the society, betterment of the city, betterment of the country, whatever you say. So those who are very much concerned about how people should behave in a family, you know, those parents who are constantly teaching and preaching how children should behave with each other, those parents who are always conscious of, you know, that this is the type of relationship that you people should have. Those who are wanting to install a level of ethics and morals and a level of behavior in their family life, in their personal space, are the ones with powerful and positive aris. Mesh Rashi. Right? So the application of discipline, application of high ethics and morals, Deciding of how people should work or how something should be comes from Mars. And whether it comes in personal life or professional life is the difference between Aries and Scorpio. And this difference is because Scorpio is basically ruled by Sun and Aries is basically ruled by Moon. Because of this particular reason, Sagittarius in its Dharma, the social aspect of religion, whereas Pisces indicates internal progress, the inner the personal aspect of religion. Capricorn indicates work culture. Something that you make for everyone working in your office. Whereas Aquarius indicates your personal work ethics. Libra indicates marriage as an institution. Taurus indicates marriage. Sorry, Libra indicates marriage as a social institution. How do you come out to a society? How do you present yourself in a society as a couple? Whereas Taurus is the personal aspect of the relationship. How the couple interacts with each other. Virgo is the scholarship that you show to the society. Virgo is your applied intelligence to the society. Whereas Gemini is your personal applied intelligence your intelligence in your day-to-day -day decisions, your intelligence in your day-to-day -day life. For this particular reason, you will see all those people who are into making the world a better place. All those people who are more into, you know, posting their ideas. You know, someone will go on and, you know, write on the road that if you are traveling through the road, if you are living in this city, help keep it clean. A clean city is a good city. The one who will go out and, you know, in the case of a jam, you will see there will be few people who will come out on road and will instruct everyone, you go this way, you go that way. They will not, they are not into traffic police. They don't have to manage it, but they will come out to manage it and ease it for everything. So actually, 
standing in a jam. You get a motivation to come out of your door and help everyone get out of the jam. Sacrificing your personal time to just help clear the jam. Using your intelligence to make society a better place. Using your input to keep the city clean or, you know, and remove the obstructions, stones, etc. from the roads. Or the one who, you know, like there's a broken road. And the one person who organizes a meeting and tells everyone that, see, this is the road, this is the road in front of our home and it is broken. And what I think is we all should collect some money and contribute it to make this to repair this road and make it better for everyone. The one who is harbinger of this change, the one who thinks this and the one who implements this is the one having a prominent and a positive Virgo. This is how the signs are differentiated. And once you understand the elements of science in depth and properly, you can make predictions that you cannot even imagine about. And this knowledge will help you do astrological remedies in such a depth and change the lives of people in such a depth that you have not imagined before. You tell me, such uses of Rashis, have you ever imagined before? Thank you for watching the video. Thank you.